been going through a lot of doubt issues, um, not knowing what to do, um, getting a lot of pressure from other people, from labels that are interested in signing me. But I really want, just want to do what I want to do. Don't let anyone tell you no. Don't let anyone tell you what to do. Just do your thing and you'll be fine. And when does your music come from? From my hands, I guess. I'd like you to try and describe if you had to sell your music to somebody. <laughs> Come here and say that. Blue wave for the 50s rockabilly voice. So yeah, that's all rockabilly I Rockabilly voice. A rockabilly voice. <laughs> but a slow motion rockabilly. <laughs> Chilled out, yeah. Chill, yeah. Ambient shit. I feel you eat away in the brain Cause you straight to try and maintain what film the same I'm always to blame Go to my day It's our place So near to great to negotiate I love I left it in 1988. Your music seems to look for inspiration in... 50s. In the past, but in the past. It, in Very nostalgic. Ghostly, ver ghostly version of the past. Yes. My last record, Badlands, yes. Because it's a dedication to my father. I just wanted to make an album that was... That's something he could actually listen to, you know? Because he, he hates all the music I make. And for once, like, I wanted to make a record that he could actually listen to and be like... Did he? You know? Yeah, he likes it. Yeah, he likes it. He really likes it. He's especially the slow songs. <laughs> I feel so fucking happy. Like, so happy. Like, this is what I always wanted. Like, I'd rather be doing this than working in the kitchen or doing fucking real estate or some shit. Yeah, fuck that. I'm so happy to be here.
pretty crazy. I never imagined uh, when I first started out, it was me by myself in my bedroom working on a laptop computer and set up what wasn't much more complicated than that. So, come a long way. A lot of the material is sample based and very sequenced. And with the band, it's hard to kind of recreate that. So we've sort of decided to just reinterpret the songs with uh, the live instrumentation that we're using. We're still kind of learning the process of playing together as a band. Uh, we've uh, only been playing together now for probably six months. Yeah, I've been doing music you know, since I was 18 years old and writing songs. And uh, it was always just sort of a hobby uh, in between classwork or, or uh, or you know whatever part-time jobs I had. I had graduated from school and uh, was like looking for a full-time employment and uh, just wasn't really working out and luckily the music thing sort of happened so. I think it's quite um, a spectacle for Paris really to have this influx of music and um, there's a definite sense of excitement, genuine excitement which you know, it's quite rare now, really. I mean, our shows in Paris have usually been two very sort of um, select and very evangelistic fans. So to, you know, times those guys by 100 is a real experience and amazing. And I um, felt a bit quite of a responsibility, really, because, you know, big fans have washed out and Aphex is playing later, so. It felt like we had to do the job today. people out there who only feel there is the middle ground and we're trying to say it's not all there there's a load of amazing stuff there
we covered the blue album. So, I'm, I'm gonna have a trick question. I'm gonna ask each of you individually what was the band most important to the formation of what real estate is as an influence. The, the most important influence? Yeah. Okay. But individually. No, don't don't talk about it. <laughs> today, like the, our current. No, so, every, of what, all time. It, ever. What, all time. I mean, the first band that comes to mind is Yola Tango. Um, like, more recently on our new album, The Feelies, for sure. Feelies? I would say, for me personally, drumming was Steve West from Caveman. <laughs> Outcasts, mostly Outcasts. <laughs> Not necessarily sonically, but like important in our relationship, uh, the band Built to Spill, for sure. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Mm. Cheers on that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Built to Spill. <laughs> <laughs> Built to Spill. <laughs> <laughs> Every keyboard part I play is influenced by Outkast. Yeah? Yeah! It's my favorite band. You guys know, you guys know Outkast, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Rose Alive. You gotta get them to do a takeaway show. You don't have enough hip hop artists that have done it in the past, you know? No! You gotta start somewhere. You gotta start strong with you Outkast. Start. Outkast and every other guy will wanna do it. Who should we film as a hip hop act? The first one. Wu Tang Clan. Outkast. Yeah, exactly. Wu-Tang Clan doesn't exist anymore. That's straight for Jay-Z. Straight for Jay-Z. Yeah, but if we film Jay-Z, we, we won't have Spectre enough deck. space to film the 40 lawyers around. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cry burn. Jay-Z, we're calling you out, man. <laughs> we want to do a performance with you on this yeah. podcast. You're man enough. Jay-Z performance. If you're man enough to do it. He can rap. Can rap? I rap a little bit, but I don't rap on camera. <laughs> yeah, only in the band. I don't rap oh, on really? camera. Oh, really? I won't have one. Je m'appelle Blicker. French on my sneaker. My rhymes are so bad it probably hurts your ears. This interview probably won't be clear because Washed Out is playing back there. Yeah. 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 Nice, nice, nice. He kills it every time. Thank we you. Love real estate. Thanks so much. Love love nice All right, man. Have a nice day. All right, we'll uh, see you around. We're gonna go, yeah, we're gonna go and see fuck that. All right, cool, man. Thanks so much. We're gonna get drunk. All right. <laughs> no, because we're, yeah. We're all fucked up. So the audience was a little bit frustrated today. Sorry, today? Yeah. It's 5.30 p.m. I yeah. won't be, I won't even be here at that time. <laughs> it's okay, it's fine, man. You know, there were, there were people there and uh, I think we woke them up. Uh, we did, it was 90 shows, the year before was 99 shows. This year we're looking at about 110. 11 years is a long time. It was only full time since 2008. You know. Yeah. That's when I quit my job. What was your job? I scheduled the Food Network in the Home and Garden Channel uh, in Canada. I had like a broadcasting job. And on my last day of work, I uh, said goodbye to everyone, rode my bike down Young Street, and then we opened up for the hip hop and the Stooges. And that was like, all right, I need to do this. Oh, the very day. Yeah, the wow. very same day. <laughs> Good last day of work, right? And yeah. then we're gonna be off for three months or four months. We're going, we're gonna take a big break and now I, I need to figure out, okay, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> uh, work on a new album? Uh, no. <laughs> no, holidays, <laughs> that's it. Well, I don't, we're, no. We've been a band at that point almost 11 years. Like, I wonder is this story told? Like, is it done? It doesn't feel done because things are still interesting. But uh, it's it's hard when you're being sorry. It's, it's hard being in the band. Like the uh, psychology, the intra-band dynamic is very tricky, and you, you don't know that as you know, mm. standing as an insider, how how mentally fucked up it is actually sometimes to be in a band. Thank you 
so much. Merci beaucoup. I do wonder where Damien is, though. Yeah, Damien, the whole band. Yeah, yeah. Could have fun. So you're shooting non-stop, eh? I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That that that's how you get the good stuff. Yeah. You know, like the unexpected stuff. Fuck! I wanted I wanted a massage for her. She's gone. Oh yeah, yeah she's gone. Yeah, but it was weird. Me to have massage. Oh, an Indian! <laughs> Watch all the Oh, really? It's on me now? Yeah. Everyone's on me. I went on the holidays and kept in How's it going? What was your show? It was fun. Yeah. It was good. People were energetic. I like that. Yeah. So, so it was good. I was had my wine, my whiskey, and my beer. So I enjoyed it thoroughly. Definitely. Now I'm going to get some more box wine. <laughs> that's, that's the classy way to do it. Cheers. This is not my whiskey. Don't drink those two at one time. That's 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 beer. Here we go. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. Oh wait, hold on. I need to catch up with the cut copy guys. Oh <laughs> hey man. <laughs> How you doing? Kind of, kind of dance music, but not exactly um, tearing, um, you know, tearing dance music that you just pump your fist to. Um, I don't know. We, we, I think we benefit sometimes from being like a, a music that's danceable, but um, yeah, we're pretty, pretty different to um, to some yeah, full on dance music, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we're the band that people like, can come down off their drugs for a little bit and then come back into having, you know, buy some more drugs. Buy some more drugs. Go by find drugs while we're playing and then <laughs> have a cigarette and then come back and Overseas is, is getting these opportunities to play. You know, I guess in cities that you know, before we started playing together, we dreamed about going on holiday to Paris. I think it's just uh, it's a for us it's a pretty super cool combination. Um, Pitchfork is um, you know is a is a really great website. The festival that we've done with them um, in the States is always cool. And they just, I think they just have a uh, pretty cool taste. And then you add that with, um, you know, with the with Paris, you probably can't think of a much cooler city than Paris, especially from for people so far away and so removed from the world as Australians. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool combination. So you're okay with going after FX3? I like it. Part. It's like, I, I'm a big fan of Apex Twin. I like, you know, I like that kind of music. It Apex Bison, you know. It's like, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. We're gonna go watch Apex Twin and hopefully get him to put his face on our faces. <laughs> Music, you know, and music is the language, so and FX Twin is using a language and I'm using a language. I know I'm doing this project uh, called Ponta du Prince, yeah, and that's, that's music, that's what people call it, music.
bass drum, bass, percussion instruments. I have a drum machine. I have two uh, microphones, like little contact microphones, where I can put objects and sample from these objects. And I interweave it into the system that I'm running from the computer and from the drum machine. It's like a neurological system, you know? You hear new things, then you interweave new things, you can remember things, and then new things are created on top of uh, the already remembered things, because like when you put two things together, it's something new, so you know? It's basically a system that came to me over the years, you know? It's just the most fun to play with this kind of setup. So it's, it's gonna be... It's gonna be good, I hope. that I work and live, I always want to do more and better. I feel I'm, I'm on the right path, but it's a path that's going to continue. So I'm not, you know, done. Or I still hear things that I could have done differently and, you know, but I really enjoy playing this album live and me and my band are so, like, tight, you know. It's always evolving and that's what's interesting. It's, you know, as soon as, you know, we really know the songs, that we can finally experiment and be free and, and I encourage everyone to be free and to also allow silence to take space and to just have that presence from something that you can't describe. So it's, it's, it's a really magical experience. It always is different because it's a different energy in the room and it's a different, like, you know, sometimes my voice is bad or sometimes I'm tired, sometimes I'm really, like, energetic, so, like, everything is different all the time, so every show is different. because things always change, you know, but I wanna, I wanna write, like, fucking great songs, you know.
aller sur ton nez là-bas. C'est like a very very American music what you're playing. You're breaking into the indie scene. You're in the middle of the indie scene, so that's nowadays anyone who has like who's a roots based, like song based with an acoustic guitar, you get this Americana stamp. I love indie rock as much as anyone. I I love the replacements. I love um, Richard Buckner and you know Bonnie Vare. It's so funny to me because to me he's more a roots artist than I am. There's you know, a guy mm. wearing flannel in a cabin in Wisconsin, you know, as the myth goes mm. or the fact goes, you know. And then I live in downtown Toronto and I'm an I'm an alt country singer. I, it's just a weird, yeah, you know. It's like this false perception. corner I turned with with having being more open-minded to certain sounding music was that I love songs and you can't you can take away all the sounds that make something country or make something pop or make something metal yeah, song, yeah. if the song is good then it defies that category any category and that's that's what I believe in like that's what makes me want to play music is a good song. So we do it in French? No. <laughs> I mean, je veux faire en français, mais mon français, no. c'est pas très bon. stopped developing uh, for us and even now things are developing in ways we don't even know about and um, doing this festival is a development you know we had a show booked in Paris and then we decided to come over here because it's something new and I think just gotta try new stuff you know I guess <laughs> it seems like an attitude that could work out what is it all about playing with nine people in your band, like two drums? It's like, it's something you've dreamed of. It's something that you wanted from the beginning to have like massive, important show. It is. It is. Um, it is important for me to be to with all those bodies up there. And uh, I think growing up playing in jazz bands and uh, big orchestras and stuff, you start to learn about how what it feels like to be in a room playing music with that many people. So actually nine people seems kind of small. Um, but I think it's a, the right amount of people to pull off what we're trying to pull off. And uh, it's not only the right amount of people, but it's the right people. And it's not just the nine people on stage. I mean, we have nine other people that aren't on stage that make our lives go, we make their lives go. Uh, we're together and so I think I wish that was sort of more part of the romance of bands. It's the people that make the bands happen, you know. But yeah, Bon Iver is this big 23 person touring thing, and to be honored to be headlining or something like this is really cool. Sing. 